Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 6, Genetic Change. This is the first introductory video to this uh, module and we're going to be um, just briefly overviewing what's to come and also looking at uh, a particular type of mutagen electromagnetic radiation. So in this particular video, we're going to be trying to explain how a range of different mutagens operate, including, but not limited to, electromagnetic radiation sources. As you move through this video, and certainly as you're preparing your own notes, there are a couple of levels that are worth having a look at. The first is obviously being able to define what a mutagen is, to be able to describe some different types of electromagnetic radiation, and preferably those that are, do have an impact on DNA and also to evaluate the effect of electromagnetic radiation itself on DNA. So what are mutations? Well mutations are basically any change in the DNA. So that's our, our very broad definition for mutation. Any change in the DNA information on a chromosome. Now there's lots of ways that this can happen. There's some natural ways that this can happen and then there are also ways that we've figured out how to use technology in order to change uh, the DNA. And hence, that's what this topic is all about, genetic change. And it's why we need to start with the discussion of mutation, because mutation is change. Now, mutation is also the source of new alleles in organisms. So if we're talking about the basis upon which natural selection operates, it operates on the basis of variation within populations. So we've looked at a number of different sources of variation, and now we have mutation as this very important source of new alleles in organisms. The type of thing that happens when mutation occurs can be that we get some sort of misbonding between the bases, some temporary altering of the bonding characteristic, um, either by chemicals that mimic um, the chemicals that are part of the nucleic acids and therefore will bond chemically in a similar way, or by ionising radiation, that is radiation that actually gets in and starts to interfere with the electrons that make up the bonds in these different chemical structures. So something that interferes in either the, the process of replication in the actual structure itself, uh, or an, any copying um, errors that can be made as a result of the replication processes in those important cell division processes of mitosis and meiosis. And we know that they themselves are sources of variation. We've talked about things like random segregation, independent assortment, which we'll revisit in this topic. Also, the uh, process of crossing over that itself can add uh, variation. And it's why it's nicely parked here next to this little discussion of mutation and how DNA can change. Now we're going to also look at some of the implications of change uh, as a result of mutation because there are types of mutations that can occur in different types of cells that uh, can have a different consequence depending on the type of cell that they're in. And hopefully it will be um, obvious to you that if we have change in a sex cell in a sperm or an egg cell uh, and then that particular cell is then fertilized and goes on to develop a new human being uh, or any other organism for that matter, it's not just that individual that then it carries that mutation, it's potentially every other individual that comes along that particular line. So every descendant from that original uh, individual can then inherit whatever those changed uh, DNA sequences and potentially changed genes uh, uh, have occurred. So this particular diagram is in your textbook and it's a nice uh, little overview where you can use diagrams to give you a bit of a general look uh, or a nice easy way for, for preparing your study notes to look at lots of different things that are happening, then I encourage you to do so. Biology is one of these great subjects where a picture is literally worth a thousand words. And so what is mutation? Well, mutation is change in the DNA. So any change that occurs in the actual DNA is something that we're looking at um, as far as mutation is concerned. So how can some of that happen? Well, the processes of cellular metabolism or exposure to ultraviolet uh, radiation, ionizing radiation can do it. Um, particular chemicals that we've said have a, um, a mimic or a similar sort of chemical structure to nucleic acids can do it. And uh, it can occur naturally just through replication errors, just as the DNA is copying itself, some little mistake gets made. Now, DNA is not that helpless. 
the system isn't that prone to mistakes that it just happens all the time um, willy-nilly with no control mechanisms. DNA itself does have several repair mechanisms that allow it to check what's going on, to look at the pairing of the bases to see if there's any uh, A's and T's and G's and C's that are not pairing correctly uh, to be able to try and uh, excise those, cut them out, repair them, uh, fix up any errors. Uh, and, and this is a very complex and very elegant system that the cell has for trying to make sure that the DNA um, integrity is maintained. But it's not foolproof. It's not perfect. And as a consequence of that, sometimes from whatever source, mutations can arise. And these mutations can have a number of different types of consequences, which we'll look at as we go through this particular module. When we classify mutations, there's a couple of different classifications that we'll look at. So I'll introduce these now, but each of these we're pretty much going to be um, developing in subsequent videos. And as you go through this module, you'll find references to a lot of these. The first thing I've already talked about, natural or induced, um, so there can be uh, things that occur naturally, maybe in the process of replication, um, where something goes wrong. Uh, maybe it's just normal day-to-day -day things and exposure to certain things that um, are also likely to make some minor changes. They can also be induced, and we've figured out actually how to uh, make some deliberate changes to the genetic material, and we'll look at some case studies uh, of, of where that's happened. Like any change, uh, we know that there are three possible um, outcomes. You can have a change for the better, a beneficial. Uh, you can have a change that doesn't really do anything. It just maintains the status quo, or it can be harmful. Of course, the harmful ones are often ones that are going to disappear very quickly from a population, particularly if the mutation leads to something that uh, maybe doesn't produce the correct protein at all. And if it's a critical protein, it may mean that the body or the cell can't operate without it. And so as a consequence of that, those sorts of mutations will often disappear very quickly. Beneficial mutations, on the other hand, may be uh, ones that give individuals some sort of selective advantage. And therefore, those individuals will survive, perhaps produce more offspring. And that beneficial mutation may make its way um, out um, into higher proportions within the gene pool. Mutations can also occur at the gene level or at what we might call a multi-gene level, the chromosomal level. So the changes that we see can actually just affect a single gene or a single part within um, that gene and therefore um, can have varying consequences on the amino acid sequence for which the gene codes. Uh, or it can involve whole chromosomes. And of course, if it involves whole chromosomes, then you're going to have a much bigger issue here. Then you're going to have um, some, some more serious conditions that we will, again, have a look at as we go through. Finally, we want to have a look at the difference between somatic or body cell mutations and germline um, or basically sex cell mutations. And this is critically important because when we look at the way that each of these mutations uh, will carry on into the future, somatic cell mutations are ones that are going to remain in the body. So maybe if um, something happens and, and some of my cells mutate, that might lead to cancer, which is obviously going to have a very negative or harmful impact on me, but it's not something that I'm going to pass on. However, if that happens in uh, the cells that are producing sperm and those sperm cells are going to carry those mutations, then potentially they could be uh, responsible for um, producing a new individual. And that new individual will not just carry the mutation, they'll potentially pass that on to all of their offspring and so on. So the type of mutation is important. The location of the mutation is important, and that's what we're going to be spending a little bit of time in this first section looking at. Now that we've kind of got a bit of an idea and a bit of an understanding of what mutation is, we need to just shift across to look at some of the things that cause mutation. And these factors that cause mutation are the mutagens. So a mutagen is something which causes a mutation. And we've split mutagens basically up into three main groups that we want to have a look at. So the first of these groups is uh, electromagnetic radiation. So that's pretty much think of anything that's on the electromagnetic spectrum, all the way from radio waves up to gamma radiation. Now, all of that is electromagnetic radiation, but some of that is so low energy that we don't 
think, we hope, <laughs> it's not going to cause major problems. Partly because all the mobile phones that we're carrying around are, are working pretty much in the microwave um, part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And we've got them in our pockets and we've got them up to our heads, uh, right near our brains. So we're hoping that the type of radiation, that, um, which is still part of the electromagnetic spectrum, that is involved with uh, mobile phone technologies are not going to cause uh, mutations on a regular basis. But what we do know is that the, uh, at the other end of the electromagnetic spectrum, so ultraviolet radiation, X-rays and gamma rays, these are ones that can be ionising. They're ones that are going to make the electrons in bonds vibrate, change, and as a consequence of that, uh, maybe break, reform, change the chemical compounds, and that's all we need for a mutation to potentially occur. So that's um, EMR, electromagnetic radiation. We've also got some chemicals um, that because of their nature can also act as mutagens, and you'd be aware of this. Certain, there's obviously been a lot of publicity around the problems associated with asbestos, but certain dyes, nicotine, uh, a lot of benzene derivatives. Benzene is one of these compounds that's been phased out for a lot of general uh, use. It still has some industrial applications. Uh, and even some preservatives can be um, responsible for causing mutation. In this particular video, we wanted to focus on electromagnetic radiation. You can see I've, I've given you a little bit of a, a scale here from the uh, shortwave radio um, that you might pick up in your car right through to the gamma radiation, which is the most energetic, the shortest wavelength, uh, the ones that are most like most ionizing, the ones that have caused the greatest uh, potential damage. Basically speaking, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency, the more energy. So that's it. if you're looking at the electromagnetic spectrum, that's this way. Shorter waves, higher frequencies, more energetic. Electromagnetic radiation can penetrate skin and tissue, so it can actually get into the cells inside of our body. We know that um, ultraviolet radiation is a problem. It's been linked with things like melanoma or skin cancer, melanoma, uh, or skin cancer. So we know that it does disrupt something in the cells. It's, it's making some changes there that are not natural. Um, X-rays, if you've ever had X-rays, you'll know that all the people who are um, involved in X-ray leave the room and just give you a little lead uh, sheet to wear and because uh, they don't want to be exposed to that sort of uh, radiation on an ongoing basis and gamma radiation which is the most energetic um, it's it's basically very very high energy photons uh, it's not it doesn't uh, carry any sort of a charge if you're thinking about um, the the types of radiation that are given out by radioactive particles alpha beta and gamma uh, alpha and beta are both uh, charged particles, so they are ionizing. The gamma radiation is not, but it's very energetic and it can cause ionization uh, just with, its, uh, with the amount of energy that it has. Ionizing radiations are a problem because they produce these things called free radicals. Uh, and the result of that is that basically you think about it as a, a reactive chemical that's rushing around trying to bond with something. Um, and they can cause all sorts of different things. And there's some terms that I've included here, deletions, where you remove something, a translocation, where you move it from one location to another, or a base substitution, a, a C for a T or a G or an A. Uh, and these are things that we'll look at in subsequent videos. The problem with non-ionizing radiation too is they can block normal replication of DNA, so you can actually have some things happening that shouldn't be happening. Uh, Electromagnetic radiation is a bit of a problem and we're aware of the types of radiation that can cause problems. We're also aware of some great benefits of using particularly X-rays um, and also uh, gamma radiation, which is involved in some chemotherapies or at least radiotherapies. And so these are things that we, we do use, uh, we are aware of. We want to try and take advantage of the benefits of these types of electromagnetic radiation, but we also need to be aware that they can act as mutagens and cause mutations of DNA. But they're not the only thing. There are some other things that can also cause um, some problems or act as mutagens and, and increase the rate of mutation, and we'll look at them in subsequent videos. Thanks for watching.